Hey everyone, uh, Bionic DR here uh, with a quick overview of some parts and so forth for the pneumatic air cannon that our group New Jersey Hookerman made um, back this past winter. Um, there's been an awful lot of questions and plumbing's a pain in the butt so I'm going to do the best I can to uh, keep this under two minutes and just give you a quick overview of the parts and why they're important. So anyway, we're going to start with the tank, five gallon Harbor Freight tank, cheap. Um, this is a half inch stub coming out of the tank here. Okay, this part here was removed from the tank and replaced. You must save this. This is a uh, relief valve and it comes with the, uh, the gauge, um, which is important too. Don't neglect this. Put this back on. Don't break it. It's tough to get out. Uh, get a helper. Um, don't break this. So back to the parts. Half inch stub going into a half inch to three quarter inch adapter going into the three quarter inch T. Then there's a three quarter inch to half inch adapter again there, which goes to the half inch threads of the uh, relief valve and the uh, gauge. That's a three quarter inch stub. I think it's uh, two inches long, whatever. Yours could be longer, I liked it shorter. And then it goes into the dump valve. Um, the dump valve is also a three quarter inch valve. You can see the orientation of it here. Okay, air gets pushed in this way and actually gets funneled down into this tank. And then when the diaphragm is released, it releases all the air to go out the exit. This is a 3 8 inch three-way solenoid that's 12 volt activated and it has been hacked to be reversed. It's a very simple process. You can see it on Fright Props. It tells you how to uh, switch the, uh, the innards of the solenoid around. It takes literally two minutes to do, uh, and I'm not going to explain it. You can just look it up. One of the reasons I like 12 volt is because it actually uh, can be triggered with automotive devices and a wall wart. So you plug this into a power source that stays on, and this is a momentary 12 volt switch. I just happen to have laying around, but you can use uh, an automotive like a car horn switch. Uh, just a little momentary button. Um, press the button, and since it's reversed, the tank is always filling up when the switch is off, which is why you have to reverse it. Otherwise, the tank wouldn't fill, and it would fill when you hit the button, and that it, would, it just wouldn't do anything. Um, it would actually release the air when you let go of the button. Uh, that's kind of a pain in the butt. Everyone understands why that would be. So anyway, there you go. This is a 3 quarter inch to 3 8 inch stub into the 3 8 inch solenoid with a standard input uh, air jack there. This is a muffler. I would recommend that to keep dirt out of your solenoid plus to keep some of the unwanted noise down. Another 3 8 inch stub going into a 3 8 inch plate, the kind you would actually mount on a deck and that holds this 3 inch uh, Schedule 40 PVC bell on there and then the pipe. The advantage to this setup is, and I'll try and make this quick, a lot of the hacked air compressors that use sprinkler valves or dishwasher valves, apparently, and I don't know this to be true for myself, but they will either stick, so you have to dump all of the air in one shot, and they won't reset until the air pressure drops down, or they'll hunk. This tank does neither of these things. When you take this button here, you can push it as fast as you want. It's not plugged in, there's no air in it right now, but you could actually get a machine gun sound out of this. It will keep firing until it gets down to about 20 PSI where the dump valve uh, becomes ineffective. So that's why there's an advantage to this. It is a more expensive setup, but if you have limited air supply, this is a great way to do it because you're not constantly dumping all 60 or 100 PSI um, out of your reservoirs. Uh, you could just hit it once, scare people, and go on. And you might only drop 20 PSI in one burst, uh, maintaining your 100 or 80 PSI in the tank. So there you go. Hopefully that solves a lot of questions. Uh, I've been answering a lot of them, but it's just easier to show you. So Nibleek71, a.k.a. Bionic DR, signing off.